Well, hello there, Corellian. It's Jeff Harrison here, and I want to give you some quick insight into how I use CorelDRAW for some uh, layout and design. I've grabbed some images off the internet here, and one of the problems I see is that people will spend a lot of time in uh, other image programs preparing files, and they really get hung up on uh, DPI and pixel dimensions and all kinds of other stuff like that at that stage, when really, in my opinion, during the design process, you want to keep as much flexibility as possible and uh, you really don't know which way the design is going to go until you start laying stuff out on your your final design so I just grabbed a bunch of images off the net and they're at a mixed variety of resolutions this one's a 380 DP, 81 DPI one others at 100 DPI and again once we scale them in CorelDRAW the DPI's will change and DPI is always relative to the size of your final project you don't always need to have 300 DPI. A project such as a large format sign may not need um, a 300, and other other projects may need something fairly high resolution, such as a face on a business card, something like that. Okay, so what we're going to do here is fit these photos into these red boxes. These are just red rectangles. I'm going to show you something called power clipping, if you're not familiar with that already. And so let's grab a, an image here. Let's say we've got this. Uh, so some kind of a lighthouse scene here. And one of the things about CorelDRAW is that you can rotate images non-destructively. You can rotate a bitmap all day long in, in CorelDRAW and it's not going to go mushy on you with anti-aliasing during the transformations. So I'm just rotated it there. I'm going to put it into position. The red box that I've created, think of it as like a bounding box or a cropping guide in a sense. And if I go to the um, effects menu, go to power clip, place inside container, you can see that I've applied Alt P, Alt plus the P key as a shortcut key to do this because it's something I do quite often. So now it's in there. And uh, you know what? I'm going to get into that power clip by control clicking to enter it. I'm going to rotate it just a little bit more to the right, something like that. Well, maybe a little bit less. I just want to look straight up and down. To get out of the power clip, control click in a blank area, and now we're back out of the power clip. We want to force this image into this space somehow. So we'll just scale it up. I'm just going to Move it down there a little bit. See a little bit of the roadway. Let's say that that's good. Again, Alt P will be a fast way to force that into that shape. This one here, I'm just gonna kind of put it into position. And let's zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing. I think I want to rotate this one a little to the left so that the left wall here is straight with the, the left side of that rectangle. Something like that. Select it, Alt P, forces it into that shape. Now on this one, we're going to be a little more creative. Just going to scale it upwards. And let's say we want, we want to focus in on the top triangle part of this image. I'm not sure. There's probably some kind of a name for that thing, but let's see here. I'm just going to bring that rectangle behind there to the top of the stacking order. As you can see, using some hotkeys for not only doing that, but a variety of other things is really beneficial. I'm going to click on it, rotate it just a little bit, scale it upwards a little bit more, a little bit more again, and we'll go this way a little bit. Okay, let's say we're happy with that. Again, Alt P forces it into that shape. Now, because we have the flexibility of power clips, um, I'm just going to select these shapes here. You can always change the border color to anything you want. You can make that border thicker if you want some thick borders, and you can. Uh, make them any color you need, whatever, or you can have no borders at all. And let's say we've got that, and you can you can apply things like drop shadows, uh, you know, onto that, which is a pretty common design thing to do. It's just creating those, and let's drop the feathering down a little bit. One interesting thing to do here is to grab all of these stuff just the way you see it. Let's get our text out of the scene for the moment. Select everything, convert it to one composite bitmap. At 300 dpi and so everything including the shadows will all become one single bitmap there we go so this will output very reliably the background is all one single bitmap you don't have the flexibility to edit it the way you did before but before doing a maneuver like this you could always just copy this to a new page then convert it all to a bitmap leaving your text on top and before creating a PDF or sending it out, you probably want to convert that to curves like that. Just select it, press Control Q, 
then make a PDF and you should be good to go. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial and that it may be useful for you.